Good evening, everybody. Yeah, I just wanted to do a quick video on uh, this piece of equipment here. So this is a vernier caliper. Um, so it's just kind of something that I noticed uh, down through the years of being involved in, in agriculture and mechanics and that not a lot of actual mechanics um, know how to read one of these properly. Um, now this, yeah, this is a vernier caliper. It's a Mitch Toyo, so it's one of the, one of the best. Um, and it's not to be confused with this, which is a digital caliper. Now this is not a vernier caliper. Some people call them verniers, but they're not. It's a, a digital caliper. This is a vernier because it has on the bottom a vernier scale. So this one is very simple to use, obviously. You switch it on, you get a digital reading uh, to the nearest hundred and anyone can use that. Now they are, you know, they're, they're, they're reasonably good once they're kept calibrated. They wouldn't be as accurate as um, a Mitch Toyo, that's just a fairly cheap enough one. Um, but they, they do the job. Um, but one of these here, anyone who's an engineer, anyone who's worked in engineering or in aerospace, um, sort of aircraft mechanics or anything like that that deals in uh, precision uh, equipment would be well used to using one of these. I myself work for Lufthansa Air Motive, so I worked on jet engines and I would have used these day in, day out. Um, so yeah, just um, on this, right? So they're very simple to use. Um, when you look at it, right, okay, so we have the main scale along the body of it, okay? Now this can be used for measuring can be used for measuring outside diameter with these jaws inside diameter and then it can be used for measuring depth down into like a tread bore or something um yeah so what you do is you get you get an object okay so you take your measurement of it whatever it is lock it up so it doesn't move okay we'll just place it down just so we can get a good look at it okay so we're looking down at the scale so i just picked a completely random random size there so if we look at the scale, so our zero on the vernier caliper, uh, on the vernier scale, is just slightly over 21. Now most people would look at that and say, yeah, that reads 21. But it's not actually 21. If you want to be uh, accurate to the nearest 100, um, which, will you, which you will get from the vernier scale. So every increment down here, if you look, so that would be... 20.1, 20.2, 20.3, 20 20.4, and then within that we have segments, we have five segments, so each one of them will be two hundredths. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to look down at our vernier scale, we need to follow along, look very closely, and see where one line here lines up perfectly with one line on the main scale. So where a line on the main scale and a line on the vernier scale line up that is where we're going to take our reading from, and that will be our accurate reading as to uh, the nearest uh, one hundredths. So if we look closely, follow them along. So we start at zero, we work our way along. Okay, so we're getting pretty close there now. So I would say probably, probably those two lines, that line there and that line there, line up perfectly. So that is telling me that it is 21.10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So 21.18, okay? That's very, very simple. So they are the only two lines across that scale that will line up. If you keep going, you'll see that the gaps start getting wider and wider and wider. So we'll just take another, take another reading. So we'll just go loosen her off. Uh, we'll just take another one here. So we'll look down. So our zero is, uh, so we've got 35, 36, 37. So we're just over the 38 mark. So come along and we will see that I would say those two there line up. So we've got 30, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
38.08. And that's it, it's as simple as that. The Vernier scale was um, developed by a French mathematician, uh, Pierre Vernier, in, nine, sorry, 1631. So yeah, it's been around a long time. It's the standard measurement, the standard measuring tool for, for centuries, actually, yeah. So this one here is obviously we, you know, in Europe, and that we'd use our metric scale. So we also have the imperial scale up here, which, you know, would have been predominantly used, you know, back you know 20 30 40 years ago but we're fully in the metric system now our friends in america would still be using the imperial scale a lot you know in inches but uh yeah for today we'll go with the metric scale so that's it it's as simple as that it's very easy to use um but it's surprising the amount of people who don't really know how to use it properly um so yeah that's it for today thanks for watching